The next area that we'd like to take a look at is the uh, item card. So we're going to start with uh, inventory and I'm going to go to items and I begin by getting to what looks like uh, what is an item list. So this is a list of all of my items. I can filter these by number, by description, by cost. I can filter them by all sorts of different uh, variables here. So for example, if I uh, type in 1000 and hit the enter key, it filters just to the single item that is 100. If I go over here and type in 10 and hit an asterisk in here, now I get all the ones that start with 10 and then have any additional trailing numbers after it. So I can filter data by a number of different uh, methods here. On the right hand side of this screen I have some fact boxes so I see my item number, my costing method is standard. Um, I see that the standard cost is $350.59. I see that the unit price, which is the selling price for this unit, is $4,000. So I can see a fair amount of information about this directly uh, off of this sheet. If I double click this, it actually opens up the item card. Now the item card contains a lot of different sections here. And I can open and close these by clicking these little up and down arrows here. Once I go into any kind of a card like this, if you look at the bottom, it says show more fields. And if I click this, it actually will show some additional fields here. So I have the item number. I have an item description. I have a base unit of measure for this. And I can set up as many of these as I want to. Uh, base unit of measure for this particular item is piece. And there actually are three different units of measure that are used here. I can have a, uh, a base unit of measure, I can have a selling unit of measure, and I can have a purchasing unit of measure. So I can purchase by the box, sell by the piece, or the, the each. And so there's a lot of flexibility in a way that Dynamics Nav handles units of measure. Um, I have some additional things here. When I'm looking at this card, I see quantity on purchase order. I see quantity on sales order. These numbers are blue. And if you notice, when I move over them, a little line appears here. And if I click on this, this actually will go in and show me my production order list. When I click this navigate button, I can also then show the individual production order. So here we have a production order for to make this uh, bicycle. And it's for a quantity of 27 with a due date and so on and so forth. So I can actually navigate to these documents directly off the item card and see what's here. I can do the same thing with quantity on sales orders. So I could click into here. And this will open up a list of all of my sales orders, which total the total quantity that I saw on that front page. And if I want to pick a particular sales order here, I can actually open this up. It'll take me directly to the sales order. I can see who the customer is, uh, what the posting date is, the due date of the order, uh, all of the information about this, what I'm selling it for, uh, planned delivery date, planned ship date, all of those kinds of things directly from the item card. I can just simply navigate to these things. So there's a lot of information that's available here. If I close this uh, window up and I open up the next one, I can see the invoicing tab here. And this basically lets me decide what my costing method is going to be. And Dynamics Nav allows you to use FIFO, LIFO, Special, Average, or Standard Costing. Uh, kind of the standards that are used throughout the industry. I can establish the standard cost for the item. I have a selling price that I can put on here. So if there's no customer specific selling price or anything else, this is the price that will appear on my sales order. I can pick some posting groups and uh, posting groups is a whole nother discussion that we'll have at some point in time but uh, I put in the basic posting groups that I want this to work with and these posting groups determine what GL chart of account numbers this the transactions will post to uh, when I use this item I can say allow discounts and I can have a an item discount group here when I drill into this item discount category, I can uh, 
actually navigate to this discount and we can see what it what it means to actually uh, have this discount so if I look at sales line discounts up here what I see is that for all customers if a customer buys a minimum quantity of 15 they're going to get an extra 25 percent discount on this line item purchase so it gives you the ability to <coughs> further control customer the, the customer sales experience here I have a sales unit of measure, and this can be different from the uh, base unit of measure that I had. So I could uh, I could buy this in boxes and sell them in pieces. Under the replenishment system, this particular item is set up to be replenished by a production order. So it's linked to manufacturing. I'm going to produce this, and it's a make-to-order. The other option that I have here is make to stock. So if I wanted to always have stocking levels of a certain number of these, this one is made to specific orders. I can have a routing for it. This is routing number uh, 1000, which matches the part number. It's a typical way that routings are created here. And if I look at the uh, routings, I can uh, actually go in and see the routing for this. Oops, let me uh, exit out here and edit this. So here I'm, uh, I'm first going to work center 10. It's wheel assembly, then chain assembly, then final assembly, and then quality control. And uh, I have the estimated setup time, run time, wait time, so on and so forth. And these are uh, configured in minutes. So I can set my unit of measure here as minutes, hours, uh, whatever I need to in order to do that. And... Uh, in addition to uh, routing for this, I also have a production bill of materials. Again, if I drill into this, I can uh, edit the, the bill of materials for this. And here I see all of the materials that are going to go into assembling this bike, a front wheel, a back wheel, a chain assembly, uh, all of the items that are going to be used for it, along with the quantity per. So. Uh, in terms of manufacturing the item, I can configure routings and bill of materials for it. We have a flushing method, and the flushing methods are either forward or backward or manual. And what this does really is it tells uh, Dynamics Nav how you want to uh, consume the materials on, on the, the material from the bill of materials. So I have a production order. If I have this set to backward, the system will automatically remove those materials when I complete the item on the production order. If I set it to forward, as soon as I begin working on the production order, the materials are removed and flushed from the system. So it automatically will consume the materials on your bill of material from a production order. Another area that's really uh, kind of um, interesting here, and one of the things that I think is uh, a real plus for Dynamics Nav, is that we can track things. Uh, we can set up an item tracking code, and we can track serial numbers or lot numbers. We also can set an expiration date on these document on these items, so that, uh, for example, I could have an item, and uh, if I if I set up a date here, for example, of uh, 6M after uh, when this item was put into inventory after six months had expired it wouldn't we would no longer be able to sell it it would be considered um, expired so uh, some very nice features related to how dynamics nav can handle um, things related to uh, item tracking it's also a planning area for things that are purchased so here i can set a fixed reorder quantity i can set a min max level and uh, for items that are purchased in here, then I can set ordering controls. The reorder point is when I hit 10, I'm going to reorder 100. I can have a min-max uh, uh, setup where my minimum is 10. When I hit that, I'm going to bring it back up to a max quantity. And I have order, order multiples that I have to uh, observe with my vendor. So a lot of flexibility and a lot of power in the way that things are set up around the items in Dynamics NAV. There are some other features that uh, I think you'll find very interesting about uh, these items. I'm going to pick something that isn't a manufactured item. I'm going to pick an item that is uh, a purchase item. So I created an item for this demonstration, and it's a cigar. And if I, this is a Havana cigar, so if I open this up, um, I've set this item up as a purchased item. 
and we're going to go down and just take a look at the uh, bottom of this for a second. So replenishment system is purchasing. I'm going to use a fixed reorder quantity. When the reorder, when it, when I get to a quantity of 10, I'm going to reorder another hundred of these. And uh, I've also set up some other attributes on this that are um, very unique. Well, I think they're kind of interesting for many businesses. So if I hit navigate here and I go to variant codes, in Dynamics Nav, variants are used for minor variations of a product. So for example, if I were producing ink pens, the ink pens may all be the same, but they have different colors. So the item is really the same, but it has a minor variation and it would be color. So for my cigar, what I've done is I've set up some variant codes here of good, better, and best. So this is my Havana cigar. Cigar. It's a 4A quality. Better is a 3A. Good is a 2A. So on and so forth. So I've set these variants up for this. And then what I've actually done is I've gone into the sales area and I've set up pricing for this. So for all customers, and I could set this up for a specific customer or a customer price group, but I have this set up for all customers right now. If you buy a good cigar, you're going to pay $100 a box. If you buy better, it's going to be $150. If you buy the best, it's going to be $200 per box for cigars. So depending upon the variant code, I can change the pricing structure that I charge to my customers. So let me close this up and show you how this actually works. So if I go out to um, sales and marketing, order processing, and I create a sales order here, I'm going to create a brand new sales order. And I'm going to make this to, uh, let me just tab off of that and drop down here to my sell to customer. I'm going to sell this to the Canon group, and none of the rest of this really matters for this illustration. But if I come down here and I put in type item, and I'm going to sell my, my cigar, it pops up and says uh, Havana Cigar. But now I can come into my variant code, and I can select which of these that I actually want to pick here. So let's pick good. And when I tab off of this, what you can see is that the unit price is a hundred dollars here. But if I uh, if I go into here and I select better and I tab off of this, my unit price automatically changes to 150. And again, if I pick the very best and I tab off of this, then it goes to two hundred dollars. And notice that the descriptions change with the description on the variant code. So now with my best, I have Havana Havana cigar. Uh, for a quality. So I can control my pricing based upon attributes of a particular product here. Kind of a, um, uh, a, a very nice, a very slick way to control pricing. And these prices can be set by all customers, by specific customers, uh, by uh, price groups. And uh, if, a, if I'm selling to a customer and they have a customer specific price, they'll get that one. And then it looks to see if they're part of a customer group and it would get that. If not, then it would default to the all customer pricing. So I can control the price, uh, the way that I price products to my customers uh, down to a, a very finite level by using these combinations of features inside of Dynamics NAV.